Chapter Eleven of the Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Wattles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Realization. If you were to stop at the close of the last chapter, however, you would never become great. You would be indeed a mere dreamer of dreams, a castle builder. Too many do stop there. They do not understand the necessity for present action in realizing the vision and bringing the thought form into manifestation. Two things are necessary. Firstly, the making of the thought form, and secondly, the actual appropriation to yourself of all that goes into and around the thought form. We have discussed the first, now we will proceed to give directions for the second. When you have made your thought form, you are already, in your interior, what you want to be. Next, you must become externally what you want to be. You are already great within, but you are not yet doing the great things without. You cannot begin, on the instant, to do the great things. You cannot be before the world the great actor, or lawyer, or musician, or personality you know yourself to be. No one will entrust great things to you as yet, for you have not made yourself known. But you can always begin to do small things in a great way. Here lies the whole secret. You can begin to be great today in your own home, in your store or office, on the street, everywhere. You can begin to make yourself known as great, and you can do this by doing everything you do in a great way. You must put the whole power of your great soul into every act, however small or commonplace, and so reveal to your family, your friends and neighbors what you really are. Do not brag or boast of yourself. Do not go about telling people what a great personage you are. Simply live in a great way. No one will believe you if you tell him you are a great man, but no one can doubt your greatness if you show it in your actions. In your domestic circle, be so just, so generous, so courteous and kindly, that your family, your wife, husband, children, brothers and sisters shall know that you are a great and noble soul. In all your relations with man be great, just, generous, courteous and kindly. The great are never otherwise. This is your attitude. Next, and most important, you must have absolute faith in your own perceptions of truth. Never act in haste or hurry. Be deliberate in everything. Wait until you feel that you know the true way. And when you do feel that you know the true way, be guided by your own faith, though the entire world shall disagree with you. If you do not believe what God tells you in little things, you will never draw upon his wisdom and knowledge in larger things. When you feel deeply that a certain act is the right act, do it and have perfect faith that the consequences will be good. When you are deeply impressed that a certain thing is true, no matter what the appearances to the contrary may be, accept that thing as true and act accordingly. The one way to develop a perception of truth in large things is to trust absolutely to your present perception of truth in small things. Remember that you are seeking to develop this very power or faculty, the perception of truth. You are learning to read the thoughts of God. Nothing is great and nothing is small in the sight of omnipotence. He holds the sun in its place, but he also notes a sparrow's fall, and numbers the hairs of your head. God is as much interested in the little matters of everyday life as he is in the affairs of nations. You can perceive truth about family and neighborhood affairs, as well as about matters of statecraft. And the way to begin is to have perfect faith in the truth in these small matters, as it is revealed to you from day to day. When you feel deeply impelled to take a course that seems contrary to all reason and worldly judgment, take that course. Listen to the suggestions and advice of others, but always do what you feel deeply in the within to be the true thing to do. Rely with absolute faith, at all times, on your own perception of truth, but be sure that you listen to God, that you do not act in haste, fear, or anxiety. Rely upon your perception of truth in all the facts and circumstances of life. If you feel deeply that a certain man will be in a certain place on a certain day, go there with perfect faith to meet him. He will be there, no matter how unlikely it may seem. If you feel sure that certain people are making certain combinations, or doing certain things, act in the faith that they are doing those things. 
if you feel sure of the truth of any circumstance or happening near or distant past present or to come trust in your perception you may make occasional mistakes at first because of your imperfect understanding of the within but you will soon be guided almost invariably right soon your family and friends will begin to defer more and more to your judgment and to be guided by you soon your neighbors and townsmen will be coming to you for counsel and advice soon you will be recognized as one who is great in small things and you will be called upon more and more to take charge of larger things all that is necessary is to be guided absolutely in all things by your inner light your perception of truth obey your soul have perfect faith in yourself never think of yourself with doubt or distrust or as one who makes mistakes if i judge my judgment is just for i seek not honor from men but from the father only end of chapter 11